Here we have a great representation of the city, and I, I just want to thank you guys for coming. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Libby Embody. I'm the director for the Main Street program, um, and we've been going at it since February, so almost a year now. And the Wahala Main Street program just graduated to the next level, the aspiring level, um, which is a three-year kind of boot camp. Um, that will get us really where we want to go and help us focus on these goals. Um, I know most of you, we have had conversations about where we want to see Wahala and the opportunities and the assets that we have here. Um, most of you have been involved in this kind of work your whole lives. Um, and it shows we have these guys coming from at the state level and they've seen the work that you've done in restoring these buildings and building up downtown already. So, um, you know me, I'm just super excited and I get really excited about stuff, but we wanna definitely thank the mayor um, and the city administrator for all their work kind of getting us to this point and supporting the Main Street program and city council and of course, every one of you guys. So we should have a really fun night in store for us. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Jenny, who's the state director for our Main Street program. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, so my part in tonight's session is to explain to you why we're here. Um, so this is what we call a resource team visit. And as Libby mentioned, it's part of the three year onboarding process to help grow the Main Street community here. So we're assessing your current revitalization activities we're also going to be providing recommendations to Main Street Wahala, city partners, and city leadership on building a successful revitalization program. We're going to help you identify specific needs and challenges to build further. And then we're going to provide assistance in organizing a strong leadership base. This is not a one-man show. Main Street is for everyone. So we're going to help pull those people together. And then we're also going to finish with defining priorities and programming goals to build a proactive work plan. A work plan that doesn't just sit on the shelf. It's a work plan that you all will be a part of. So your team, if you'll flip to the next slide, please, Dave. Your team consists of Mutrily, the director of the State Main Street Program, Main Street, South Carolina. We're based in Columbia. You are now part of the Main Street Network. You are one of 28 identified Main Street communities in South Carolina. We also have Blake Sanders, who is with Studio Main. You have worked with him since 2014 on a lot of design activities relating to your downtown streetscaping. And then we also are joined by Randy Wilson, who is the president of Community Design Solutions. He's going to be leading tonight's workshop. Good evening, everybody. How are you all? Good. So uh, welcome tonight, and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this evening. We want to respect your time. We hope to be out of here in about an hour. Uh, it's going to be fast-paced, and so the only favor I need you to, to do is, is to, when we call for response, is try to project those as loud as you can. I don't know about you all, but in the age of COVID and mask wearing, it's less about the, uh, what do you call it, the, the muffled tone. It's just, I miss seeing people's lips move, right? It's amazing how much we depended on that to, to, to quote unquote, to hear. So, but tonight I'm just going to ask a series of questions, um, and I'm only asking for your opinion, so there's no wrong answer. So everybody can just kind of relax and chill. Before I get that, I wanted to take just a brief moment to explain this thing called Main Street, because my assumption in a crowd this large is probably a lot of people who know all about Main Street. You could probably do Jenny and my job. But perhaps there are those who you've heard this concept, and, and you think, well, that's just the name of a street. You know, but what is this Main Street program? If we go to the next slide, please, David. I want to give you my simple one sense definition of the Main Street program. It is a way to manage the change that, it, that is going to occur in your downtown over time. My strong assumption is Wahala, South Carolina, 2021, is different than Wahala, 2015. And I can guarantee you Wahala, 2025, is yet again going to be different than the one it is now. And you have two options when it comes to the change that's going to occur in your community and specifically in your downtown. You can either just let it happen to you but you can sort of curate and manage that change on your terms. And I've only been here about 24 hours, but I can already tell this is a place that's chock full of 
and it cares deeply about the arts, culture, history, and this lush natural environment that you reside in, but all of that done with that sort of small hometown sort of feel that you care deeply about. My strong assumption is the reason you invest. It's the reason you raise your children here. It's because it's the kind of quality of life and lifestyle that you believe is the best for you and your family and your business. We want to honor that. And so the Main Street program is uniquely equipped to help manage you towards that kind of growth on your terms. The way it's done on the next slide is through a whole point approach that I like to illustrate using a four-legged stool because that stool works best when all four legs are present. You take a leg away, you may can sit on it, but it may be a little wobbly. You take two away, you better have very good balancing skills. But the four points or the four legs of Main Street consist of design, organization, promotion, and economic vitality. Design means simply this. If you're downtown and it's buildings, it's streetscapes, it's parks, and it's open spaces, if they don't look good, if they don't function well, and they don't feel safe, people and patrons, residents, and guests alike aren't going to want to go there. O stands for organization. And that is making the best of the public and the private sector. There's a role that Mayor Danny and Brent and their staff can play in this community. There's a role that Allison and the private sector is going to play, developers and, and, and people of that sort. And one is, is uniquely primed and, and, and skilled to do one thing, and the other is uniquely primed and skilled to do another, and we need the best of those coming together in strategic partnerships. Make sense? Promotions are those activities and events like farmers markets and festivals and concerts that bring people and draw them to our downtown so they can enjoy and see what makes Wahala unique and quintessentially itself. Um, I like to think of it, it, it's sort of your unique calling card. And when people come downtown, what I hope they'll experience and what they'll see is, wow, these, these really unique buildings, they'll, they'll, they'll experience these unique shops. And ideally, they're going to experience all that in, 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 a, in a level of customer service that's second to none. And that leads to the last point, economic vitality, or if you will, economic development. You know, we're not going to try to compete with the big box retailers per se. We want to actually complement those offerings. And making sure that the cup of coffee and, and, the, and the craft and, and, and whatever is purchased downtown, you receive it with, with a level of customer care. It lets you know that somebody cares about you as an individual and you aren't just a number, you aren't just a sale to them. And so that's the Main Street approach. And when those four points are operational at the same time, Main Street has worked every time that people have worked it. And it is the most tr proven economic development tool utilizing historic preservation that's ever been created in the history of mankind. And so we're so proud to have you as a part of the Main Street community, specifically Main Street, South Carolina. So now it's your turn. So if we can go to the next slide, and you can, frankly, you can just kind of go ahead and go to the next one. Again, I'm going to ask you some extraordinarily simple questions, but believe it or not, your answers are going to give us a lot of good information to, to make our recommendations from. I'm only asking for your opinion, which means there's no wrong answers. The only ground rule is, is one or two. I think the, the only one I can think of at the moment is this. I want to hear your opinion, but I don't want you to debate somebody else's opinion, okay? So if I was to ask what your favorite color is, and of course, wherever you are, probably a lot of people are going to say orange, okay? That, that's great, but I don't want somebody to tell me why you shouldn't pick orange, okay? That's, if they like orange, so be it. If they like purple, okay, whatever. If those two can go together in your universe, that's fine. I'm just kidding. So just, I just want your opinion, but just don't debate somebody else's opinion, okay? So here's the first question. You are charged with sending out a postcard. And the purpose of this postcard is to celebrate the best of Wahala. And you want to capture the essence of Wahala. And so what I want to know is what image you would place, it could be a photograph, a sketch, what image would you place on the postcard to capture the best of or the essence of Wahala? The floor is open, call it out loud and proud. Massive door prize for the first answer. And I'm just kidding. What's that? Mountain and lakes. The, the mountains and the lakes. I, I heard that it's so hard I can't even find you. I don't know who said that, but that's a great answer. <laughs> 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 
You know, maybe you'll understand why he has a way to help you live. That's, that's a great answer. And as I've told the group today, it's like, God's not handing this out anymore. It's like, you guys have this. I mean, it's such a lush natural environment. All right, what else? Okay, so you put the name and, and the catchphrase, the Garden of the Gods. Good. All right, what else? What other images would you put on postcards? Because you get to send out a series. You, don't, you aren't limited to one. What mountain, other images? Mountain, biking, and rivers. The mountains, lakes, and the rivers. Mountain, biking. Mountain, biking. Okay, and thank the, you. The river and paddling. And the river and paddling. Good. An outdoors person. Well, holiday during Oktoberfest. So you'd put a picture of your festival, Oktoberfest. Okay, good. Main Street, yeah, and this quintessential stretch of, of historic buildings, they're, they're stunning looking. Very good. St. John's Church, absolutely. Beautiful church. We can create a series, the Spires of Wahala. <laughs> what else would you put on your postcards? And by the way, the Sword of Wahala World War Center. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy in the rear. <laughs> the historic Wahala Performing Arts Center. Absolutely. I mean, is this not a stunning asset you have right in the heart of your downtown? Well done, Mark. All right. A picture of, of all of your activities of this, like your barber's market and your cruises. Great idea. Did you have your hand up? I love answers from young people. If you want, <laughs> I didn't mean to embarrass you. <laughs> hey, Sarai. She can tell you the answer, and then you can tell me. How about that, okay? All right, other images that you would place on the postcard? Okay, train depot and somebody over here said, did you say the same thing? Y'all are like in simpatico. Way to go, the train depot. We met there all day. It's a wonderful facility. Green space. The green space. Absolutely. What else? Uh, yes, sir. How about the people? Dude, that's a great answer because I was going to pick on Libby if she didn't say it. Because no. that's what we, we picked up on all day today. It's like what sets this place apart is the people. I mean, yeah, all these assets are great, but there's something really resonant about the people. The fact that, well, Sarai's been here her whole life. I mean, all these people have been here, you know, forever, and, and then they're, they're, they're committed to calling home. Great answer. Yes, ma'am. The waterfalls, you have to give this young lady a hand. Great answer, good, all right. Anything else you'd put on your postcards? Images to capture the best of and the essence of Wahala. Because everybody knows Libby's a graphic designer. She's, she's thinking how she's gonna do this right now. All right, let's see what, let's, let's take these postcards on steroids. And now what we're gonna do, for now, I just want you to add one word it captures, again, the essence and the, and the best of Wahala that we might add to these images, okay? What, what word kind of captures, there's one I want to throw out, but it's, it's cheating, but I would say home, you know, maybe, the, and everything good that that re represents, and by the way, somebody can steal that if they want, but what's, what's the word? That we, what was that? Peaceful. Peaceful, great answer. Picturesque. Picturesque. Historic. Historic. Artsy farsy is kind of a hyphenated word, but <laughs> <laughs> my outdoors leaves. You need that. Adventurous. And yes, what a great word. I think most of you know uh, one of our partners uh, in the mainstream world, Ben Muldrow. He did the branding campaign in, in what well, we call it TR. I mean, that's how you know if, if you're if you're from here or not. If you call it travel to the rest, we know you're not. A, you, you, you ain't from around here. But when we did TR, in case you didn't know, the brand campaign is we featured all of these words that began with TR. Trek, travel, uh, and I'm going blank. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, at the end of the presentation, um, where's the mayor? The, the car dealer in, 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 from the Ford dealership in TR, she goes, hey, truck starts with TR. <laughs> so he added to that brand campaign. But yeah, adventurous, what a great word that captures, you know, part of who you are. Other words. Who said friendly? That's a great, great word. Absolutely. We've experienced that so far. There's so many more. Come on. Welcoming, I can think of welcoming. Welcoming. Welcoming Wahala. Yeah. There's so many words I want to give you right now, but I don't want to change. Okay, delicious food. Yeah, we'll, we'll hyphenate it. 
Dieu. Ah ben, c'est ici. <laughs> Let me try some, some words on you. Let's see what you think. Do you view the word quaint as a positive or negative? Just capture or yes or no? What about quaint? It can be interpreted both ways. That's why I was asking. Any other words before we move on? I cannot believe no one said this story. Oh, somebody? Okay, I'm sorry, I missed it. I missed it. My bad. That's right. First one. All right. Last but not least, this is your attempt to become a branding expert. Instead of a word, I'm going to let you have a phrase. What was your phrase a while ago? The Garden of the Gods. Yes, that's what Baal means. Okay. Any other phrases that you would throw out, because this way you don't have to limit yourself to one word. Any phrases that you would think, man, when I tell people about Valhalla, I say, can I quote you, Leslie? This, this afternoon, she had a great thing. She says, I want us to be the hub of Oconee County. You know, uh, to me, that, that's a cool phrase. It captures a part of who you are. Where you're, one of our hashtags is a mile to the mountain. Oh, it's a mile to the mountain. We love Valhalla. We love Valhalla. Great. Gateway, gateway to the mountains, gateway to, yeah, good. Gateway to adventure. All right, any other phrases before we move on? All right, next slide, please. Oh, this is a fun one. Now you get to be me. You get to be a recovering architect, and you get to change something in downtown. So I'm going to let you relatively, with, with, with few budgetary restraints, maybe a few, if you can make one change to downtown to improve the look or the feel of downtown, what would you do? Yes, ma'am. Put the turning lane back at Catherine Street. <laughs> Put the turning lane back at Catherine Street. Good. And by the way, if, that was really helpful. If you wouldn't mind open, raising your hand, then I can zoom right to you. What, one change to improve the look or feel. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. Hotel. Okay, add a hotel. Good. Yes, ma'am. Playground. Playground. Good. Yes. Dog park. Dog park. Absolutely. One of my favorite things about dog parks. Y'all ever go to dog parks? And dog owners, they don't introduce themselves by themselves. They introduce themselves by their dogs. They're so and so's mom or dad. They don't. They, it's, like I live in this historic neighborhood in downtown Columbia. And when we meet people in the neighborhood, they don't introduce themselves by name. They say, hey, I'm Randy. I live in the greenhouse on Lincoln. Oh, oh yeah, I live in the arch house on Pepper. And dog people are the same way. They introduce themselves by their animals. So, yes, sir. Moving utilities lines underground. Great. Burying utilities underground. Good. Green yes, ma'am. Like a greenway. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is that's in the works. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a thorough greenway and trail system through downtown. Absolutely. Sustainability, yes. recycling. Yeah, let's promote sustainability in everything we do. Good. Doesn't anybody want to add some string lines or art? <laughs> One change to improve the look or feel of downtown. And, and another way you think about this is think about places you like, that, that you visit, you enjoy, you get away over the weekend. What are some of the characteristics of those? I don't want you to become them, but are there some things from those places we can adapt here at Wahala Pleasant? Great, so areas out to enjoy outdoor dining. And, and it's amazing, isn't it amazing when you see that, it just evokes activity and animation. It, it makes a place come alive. Yes, ma'am. More murals by Libby. <laughs> oh, I, I just heard it. more murals by Libby. I, amen, amen, and amen. Adding to what she said, an outdoor event center. Outdoor event center, good. Very good. Okay, outdoor event theater, amphitheater, things of that nature. Other things that you would do, you can, you can be simple or you can be bold. It can be as simple as, hey, let's have artistic crosswalks instead of plain boring ones. You can have more landscaping, more flowers, fixed up buildings. Come on, people. Yes, sir. Uh, the lights in the trees to stay year round. Okay, lights in the trees to stay, stay year round. Great. Oh, I forgot to mention, Jenny is recording everything you're telling us. So all of your answers will go into our final report because we don't want to let anything drop off the map. Uh, the fact that you've given up your time to be here tonight, we want to respect everything that's said. So uh, I apologize for not mentioning that earlier. Somebody else? One, one change. Yes, ma'am. Well, like a co-op of some kind, whether it's an artist co-op or a food co-op or 
I love it. Co-op, artists, work, whatever. That's great. Artists are good. Okay. All right, so maintain fixed and enhanced sidewalks. Great. Just, just for the record, you know, uh, we do master plans all across America, and if, if I only had one part of the downtown to fix up, in other words, you want to fix up many areas, but if you were limited to one, I'd always, always fix the sidewalks. Because the sidewalk is, is the place where, where a motorist becomes a pedestrian. And whether they come into your business or not, they're always going to be in that zone. And so to the degree that we can make that a pleasurable experience, we can animate it with colorful bistro tables and chairs and benches and furnishings and, and, and landscaping, you just put your best welcome mat out for your guests. So great, great com comment, Leslie. Yes? A public restroom that's found there easily. Absolutely. Public restrooms that are easily accessible and found. Great comment. Other, other ideas? Take, yes? Uh, I think about a town like Hendersonville, but just these other little small towns where they have like a, something that represents them. I think they need bears. Oh, yeah. And okay. all the little artists, all, all right. the different decorations. So something that captures like you. Like people will come to visit to see yeah. something unique like that. Absolutely. It doesn't matter whether it's the Greenville Mines <laughs> or the Asheville Bears. Yes, sir. It would be nice to have uh, trees in like the square area, uh, like some large, you know, significant trees, similar to like Absolutely. The there's no substitute for shade trees. I mean, their value is just, just off the charts in every way. By the way, I want to say something really important. I apologize. Remember when I said there's two ground, ground rules? There was really one rule and, and one comment. I failed to mention it. Um, it may strike you as odd, but I'm a painful introvert in real life. Okay? I, I, that's obviously not my role right now. There are some people in the room tonight who probably have some fabulous ideas, but you are deathly afraid of saying them out loud. I respect that, but we want to know your input. And so for you, if you would simply just jot it down or fire a, an email or just tell Libby, please know we want your answers to these questions, even if you don't feel comfortable saying them out loud. Okay? I respect the fact that, that for some people, speaking out loud in public meetings is, is not their preference. So, okay. My apologies for not saying that earlier. Any other ways that you would change the downtown to improve the look of the field? To make it a place that you're proud of, you can't wait to bring people to. Yeah, and facelift. Give facelift to the buildings. And was it speakers for music? Yeah. Have you been to places where you walk around and you hear that, that background music? Isn't it cool? Okay, I shouldn't use this phrase out loud, but I'm gonna. I call it like the crack cocaine of downtown revitalization. Okay, it's string lights, music, flowers, and alleys and art. It's like, it's just a little kid. You do those things and everything's, wow, our downtown's cool now, okay? So I, I totally agree with that comment. And please don't quote me on that if the press is cool. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, I know it's exactly what you mean, and here's the phrase I like to use, and, and let me make sure I capture the heart of what you're saying, is, is you don't want conformity, you don't want to be Disney's rule, but you, you do want compatibility and consistency. Exactly, you know, so that, that it, they may not be the same theme or the color, but, but they all look good and harmonious together, because this is a real place, so great comment. Any more, you know, time for one more, otherwise we're going to move on, because I know I'm standing between you and supper. <laughs> All right, next question, please. Oh, this is a good one. What would you like to be able to do or get in Wahala that you can't currently? Now, now let, me, let me add just one minor caveat to this one. As a part of this resource team, we're going to be providing you with a market assessment, a market snapshot. And it is going to identify kind of your current retail trends and in, in areas in which you're leaking, areas where you're capturing. So understand, let me just burst your bubble and then I won't bust it anymore, okay? If you tell me you want a 14 screen theater, I got bad news. It's just not going to happen, okay? If you want a belt, now it's probably not going to happen. But within reason, there are probably some things that you leave town for 
to do or get that you really could support? What are some of those things that you'd like to be able to do? Or get? Oh, well, the, the, the hands fly up. Yes, ma'am, to the back. Go to a brewery. Brewery. Mm -hmm. A large, updated playground. Updated playground. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Hold on one second. Let's make sure Jenny's caught up. You good? Okay. Yes. Groceries. Groceries. Good. I'm going to be really good. I see that hand. Yes. A candy shop. A candy shop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Upscale, uh, upscale restaurant. Upscale restaurant. Hotel. Hotel. You caught up? A bakery. A bakery. Yeah. Yes. Beauty salon. Beauty salon. Along with Uptown Restaurant, a liquor license. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Restaurant that gets a liquor. Yes. yes. I thought I saw a hand over here. Uh, uh, yoga studio and smoothies. Yoga nice. studios and smoothies. In the same place or different? I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. A bookstore. Ice cream. Oh, this is a moment after my own heart. Yeah, ice cream. Ice cream outside the park. Okay, so Sariah, I can tell your daughter is an urban planner. No, I'm being serious because you never want to create a park or even a playground without adjacent activities, you know, for the adults to do and, and, and for, for adults to do after that. I'll come right back to you, this person, person, and you. I think this will happen when we get the bikes here, but a bicycle shop. Yeah. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. A bicycle shop out there. Yes, sir. I wish, I wish the old courthouse that we have. I wish that would have been converted into a, a motel, I, you know, like a big Howard Johnson or something like that. I, yeah. see, I don't see that what we did in the middle of town, but I see that old courthouse and there was a project at one time that was going to turn that into a little, you know, like a, a mid-century type. Sure. And I think that would have been a good thing. Uh, I remember your name, is it Bruce? Bruce. Yeah, I can't believe it. Thank you. <laughs> so, so Bruce, um, it might be more possible than you think. Whenever I work in Jackson, Mississippi, there's a downtown boutique hotel that's in their old library. And the library was at that same sort of mid-century international kind of sort of Art Deco styles at County Courthouse. And it's fabulous. Now, I, I do understand there's some, some issues with degradation there over time, but um, it could happen. It could happen. All right. Another idea. What would you like to be able to do or get in Walhalla? You can't cover it. Yes. A toy shop. Toy shop. Yes. Presents shop. A present shop. <laughs> toy shop. Gift shop. Good. Yes, ma'am. A farm-to-table restaurant supplied by some of the local farm shops. Oh, I love the idea. I mean, in this context, it makes perfect sense. A farm-to-table restaurant that's, you know, curated from local produce and goods. I think it would be a huge hit with your outdoor, you know, nature-based enthusiasts. And especially if you already have a, have sort of an ethic of a farmer's market, I mean, that's a great extension of that. But yes here, and then I'll come to you, yes. Have the things that are here or the things that they come? Oh, okay, that, that's a good value is, is, we just wanna make sure if we have them where they're coming that they stay open, yes. Right, great. Market rate apartments, great idea. Butcher shop. A butcher shop. Who said that? Dude, oh, okay. True story. Um, by way of full disclosure, I, I also serve as a consulting architect to Lake City, South Carolina. Of course, home of Dollar Moore, so yeah, there's some disposable income. But we were doing a market study a couple years ago, but we were also sitting around a, a conference room table. We said, what do we need? And by the way, let me just give this for free. You can be your own urban planner. The most important question you need to ask is what's missing. If you can figure out what's missing, then you're halfway to the solution. And we're sitting around in conference table, we said, we need an old fashioned butcher shop. And everything I'm about to tell you, I promise I'm a part time pastor, is the gospel truth, okay? And so somebody around the table goes, I know a guy that makes a venison sausage in the back of his house. All right, go talk to him. So we talked to this young man, his name's David Fry, and uh, he says, okay, I'd be willing to try my hand at, at, at a butcher shop, and you know, and, and his sausage would be kind of the featured item. And so we worked with him with like a business startup grant, and so I came up with this really, well, in my humble opinion, cool design, 
for the fun of this moment. And, um, and so he, so when we're done with the design, say, hey, David, I, I'm just trying to give you a sense of how country David Fry is. I said, David, what's your email address so I can send you? He says, I ain't got no email address. I don't want none of that newfangled stuff. <laughs> so he is killing it. But the funny thing is, we heard this comment this afternoon. This young man can make great sausage and great cuts of beef, but he doesn't know how to run a business selling sausages and butcher. And so his, his, his sister is, is the store manager. And I think one of the principles going forward in downtown revitalization is we gotta figure out who needs to do what. You know, Somebody may be, be really good at doing something, but they not, may not be good at running the business that does that thing. So how can we pair those people up? But I, I love the butcher shop. In a creative economy, it's just one of those things that's like authentic to a place. There's nothing like getting an authentic kind of me. Other ideas you'd like to be able to do or get in Wahala currently. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I want a retirement area. A retirement area, sure. You know, I love, I, 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 it may not be, it might not have been designed for that. But those, those homes that y'all created over by the tennis courts and the pickleball courts, those are wonderful. What a great scale and probably at a price point that's affordable. Anything else you like? Yes. I would want some kind of uh, space for children and teens. Okay. I don't know what that means. Whether you know, some kind of somewhere, something for them to do, go. Maybe that's a collaborative effort. That there's projects for them to do, or I think right. activities for our youth. No problem. A place for activities for our youth, and and if if, if I can make a wish for you. I would hope that that's both a formal place and an informal place. I want your whole downtown to become a place for, for, for activities for teens to do. You know, one of the easiest ways, I mentioned some other versions of crack cocaine, of downtown revitalization. You know, other ones are vibrancy amendments. You know, it's putting cornhole out and, and, and giant Jenga and giant checkers and, and having interactive things that, that, that kids can do. We call this, those things downtown stickability. Reasons to come downtown and then stick around. Good. Yes. Well, it reminds me of the, the U Joint restaurant type. They have it in Clayton, Georgia, and it's just a, a, a gas station chain yep. into a, very, a fairly casual restaurant. But there's outdoor music, there's cornhole, there's all these things for the kids to do. And nice. Most of it is outdoor. Just exactly. And it just, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I bet it just makes that place come alive, right? Yeah. Yeah. It just feels active and alive. Good. All right. Next. Any, any more answers before we move on? Time for one more. All right, next slide, please, David. Oh, this is a good one. You get to give Jenny and me and, and Blake Sanders remotely our marching orders. You can complete either one or both phrases of the sentence on the screen. Uh, let me explain. While we're here and as we're doing our work to kind of give the Main Street program direction, you can say, Mandy and Jenny, whatever you do, do this. I'll give you an example. Whatever you do, do maintain our small town quality of life. Whatever you do, ensure you honor our history. Got it? Or you can say, whatever you do, don't. Randy G, whatever you do, don't underestimate us. Okay? Give us some really big and bold ideas. Randy, whatever you do, don't, don't mess with the charm of our historic buildings. Got it? You can choose to do the do or the don't or both. But the floor is open. Whatever you do, do. Whatever you do, don't. Yes, sir. Don't get a dollar store. Don't get a dollar store. Okay, good. Whatever you do, don't get a dollar store. Yes, sir. Whatever you do, um, try to figure out a way to build bridges between our teenage community and our English community. I love it. Whatever you do, try to build bridges between all the cultures in the community, the Latino community, Caucasian community, and all the communities. Good. Yes. I think I'm just say it one more time. Don't limit your money. Got it. Whatever you do, um, don't limit your ideas and your dreams just based on, on cost. That's a great idea. I mean, the reality check will come soon enough. <coughs> Thank you. Great answer. Okay. Whatever you do, do don't. And, and Libby, by the way, you have permission to speak too. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as well as Mark and David and Emma, anybody can. can yes. We 
Would you explain what you mean by that? Oh, gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, whatever you do, I'm going to phrase it as a don't. Don't limit our activities to just one big thing, but rather let, let's make sure they're spread out across the year. Thank you. Really good comment. Whatever you do, do. Whatever you do, don't. Yes? Exactly. Yeah, whatever you do, don't reinvent the wheel. And, and I think that both is, is local and beyond. In other words, if, if we got it here, let's just work with the best of what we have. If it exists in some other place, let's make it a Wahala-esque version of that. We don't want to be Greenville, but we want to borrow some Greenville's ideas. We don't want to be other places. But, uh, yes, sir? Whatever you do, communicate it to the public. Oh, yeah. Can I get an amen? amen. We're in church now. All right. Whatever you do, communicate. Communicate, communicate. Communicate, and, and, and both for the purpose of just conveying information, but also for celebrating your success. In one of our meetings this morning, we, we sat with, with, with a number of your elected officials, and we asked them this question, like, like what are some of the accomplishments in recent years? And, and, and the list was mind-boggling, but I dare say probably a lot of people don't know, and, and I don't mean that as a criticism, but we have to communicate and over-communicate. You have to say things dozens of times before it really resonates with people. Great answer. What else? Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't. The crowd goes silent. All right, then we're going to go to the last question, and we're going to have some fun. Are there any members of the press remaining in the room? Okay. I just need to ask you a favor. We might poke fun at some of their nearby communities, we would prefer that you didn't name them by name, okay? <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play for the remaining time, and I think in four categories, we're gonna play what I call the family game. Don't say amen too loud, but in every family, there's dysfunction. Can I get an amen? In every family, there's that weird uncle or that unusual aunt. Can I get an amen? Okay, all right. But in every family, there's greatness, and there's family ties, and there's, you know, just, there's, there's lots of good. But every family, every person has a personality. And they have good attributes and traits, and they have other ones that we kind of wish they would shore up and change, right? So this is what we're going to do. It's going to be a little weird, so I'm going to give you three examples. We're going to take physical places. We're going to take physical cities and towns. And we're going to ascribe to them human traits and characteristics, even including gender. So allow me to illustrate. I'm going to use Charleston, Columbia, and Greenville. In my humble opinion, when I think of Charleston, I think she's a female. I would even go so far, so far as to say she is a refined southern woman, okay? And Miss Charleston, she loves to party, she loves to drink, and she loves to dine. And she can put out a spread like nobody's business. She likes all things fun, all things art, and she receives a lot of yes all the time. You see how that relates to Charleston? Now, unfortunately, we're all there Columbia. Unfortunately, I think he's a crusty old man. <laughs> and he's not only a crusty old man, he, he tends to be a little bit political. The capital's there. But he tends to be very patriotic because Fort Jackson's there. And unfortunately, in this neck of the woods, they tend to crow at a Gamecock. Okay, so that's Mr. Columbia. Do you agree he's a man? All right, crusty old man. Now, Greenville might just be metrosexual. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not so sure how, how, how he or she wants to roll. But man, Greenville is young and hip. And he's got it going on with her. She has it going on with some really cool business startups and fine dining and, and just, and boy, they got lots of places to drink. Okay, we're we fair. Now you see how this is going to work? All right, so we're going to start with, next, next slide, please. I think I know. Yep, let's start with Clemson. So let's start at the basics. Is Clemson a man or a woman? Man. man. <laughs> All the ones on you, man. <laughs> Sorry. All right. 
Tell me about Mr. Clemson. He's a night owl. I heard somebody say he loves football. <laughs> he, he's a drinker. He, he, okay, he's not an alcoholic. He just likes to drink. Okay, I got it. Got it. He, Mr. Clemson likes to wear shorts and flip flops. But he farms too. Mr. But, but he loves the outdoors and he's a farmer. Yes, ma'am. He has a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. yeah, good. Everything he owns is ours in life. <laughs> He has a very limited color palette. Yeah. Good. What else? He almost has too much. <laughs> okay, that's a that's a that's a good observation. He almost feels like he has too much going on. Like, yes. He's passionate. Mr. Clemson's passionate. He's hip. I would humbly submit. I'm going to throw you a compliment. I think he's pretty well educated, right? Oh yeah. All right. What else about Mr. Clemson? He likes fast food. <laughs> and somebody back here says something. He had, he's very crowded. A little congested. Oh, proud. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's proud and proud. <laughs> Anything else about Mr. Clemson? He asks before he thinks sometimes. <laughs> he yeah. asks, yeah. Acts. acts before he thinks. That, that makes a lot more sense to me than what else. It must just be me. He acts before he thinks. He's one of those shoe pirating people. Next slide, please. Easily. Easily. I've got a lot of laughter. By the way, I've always thought that Easily and Pickens need to incorporate and call themselves Easy Pickens. But easily. That's just All right. So, Easily, man or woman, I heard a chuckle back here. No personality. <laughs> okay. Well, this is, all right. Well, <laughs> okay, we're going to get there. You should start with an S. Sleazy. Oh! This is why we don't want the press reporting this. Okay. So, but is, is it Mr. or Mrs. Easley a sleazy? Easley is a grumpy old man, and he's a sleazy old man, apparently. Okay. Wow. Okay, what else about Easley? Somebody give me something nice about it. What? Solid in the rearview mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Solid in the rearview mirror. Okay. Give me one positive. Thank you. I knew somebody was going to be positive. Okay. okay. All right. So he gets around. Yes. Very unorganized. He's very, he's very unorganized. You have to get off the main strip to actually see these. That's a real, so how about we frame that in a positive? There's more to him than meets the eye. Because the downtown part is actually, they got some cool parts, but no one ever sees that part. That's a really good observation. That's right, okay. So he, he's, he's not well organized, for lack of planning. Anything else about Mr. Easley, the grumpy old man like Columbia? All right, so in, in terminology related to a human being, maybe uh, he's trying to better himself based on, on his friends and neighbors who, who are doing a little bit better than he is at the moment. Okay, good. Next slide, please. Ooh, this is good. Okay, a little close to home. Can I know? There's some people in this room who live here. Okay. So y'all be a little gentle. You, you could accidentally be stepping on your friends and neighbors' toes. Okay. But, but let's, let's play a little fun game. So, Seneca, man or woman? Oh, okay. Miss Seneca, does everybody agree? All right, tell me about Miss Seneca. Cares about her friends regardless of the cost. Nice. She cares about her friends regardless of the cost. Yes, sir. Jealous. Oh, of who? Of the Rana community. Okay, she's jealous of, 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 of some of her neighbors. All right. She has a hidden gem on Lancat Alley. Absolutely, she does. She has some. She has some hidden gems. Again, kind of similar to easily. There's more to her than meets the eye. She's disjointed. Okay. Yeah. So she needs a life coach. Okay. So she thinks she's all that. Okay. She's aggressive. Okay, oh, that's good. She 
Bisa berkenan. Di sekolah tahu. That was like spoken with conviction, like somebody knows. Okay. <laughs> you know, it strikes me. By the way, I don't, I don't know these communities. I, I don't get up here very often, but I, I, this is just a, a guess. I bet Seneca struggles kind of between. They're like between places that have real strong identities. So I bet they're trying to carve that out. So, all right, guess where we're landing last? Next slide, please. Drum roll. Whoa. And we're going to stay here a while. Here's going to be the hardest one of all, men or women. All, all in favor of man, raise your hand. All in favor of woman, raise your hand. Uh oh. Uh oh. She's back. Okay. <laughs> She's multifaceted. There we go. All right. You're going to make it hard on me. Thanks for making me sweat in front of you. Okay. All right. So. Mr. and Miss Wahama, tell me about her character, her person that his. All right, no, no, we're going to draw lines in. Man or woman? Man. Hands in the air, man. If you okay. said, if you said he and her, then yeah. it would be he's old and she's young. There you go, I can do that. Woman. Okay, all right, we'll go with twins. All right, tell, tell, me, tell me about the twins that are Wahala. Okay, all right, tell me about Wahala. Up and coming. She, she and he are up and coming. He's an old soul. That's a good one. Old, he's both an old soul but up and coming. Well, that be a, should be on a tagline somewhere. He's like your, your son's uncle who's the youngest brother and doesn't have kids. It's really fun. I agree with you. I just can't restate it. That's good. I, I, believe it or not, I know exactly what you mean. Every family has the favorite uncle. Wahala is the favorite uncle. Absolutely. Mm, oh, good. Changing for the positive. Changing for the better. Oh, so it's Lana, right? So Wahala has taken steps to progress, but they're very tentative steps. Like we, we want to test the waters. Is that, is that a fair statement? There's splits. You feel like you've got some people who don't welcome the change, and there's some people who are pushed, you know, who really are just wanting to be dominant. So it's kind of a it's like a tug of war. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's a tug of war within the family. Yeah. Got it. Well said. Yes. Wahala well, is somebody that's been that's been hurt a lot in mm. in the past from the fact that it always feels like it's about to be something big, and then something pulls it under the rug. It's it's fragile in a sense. And that's a powerful statement right there. That's a powerful statement. And I want to make sure everybody heard it. Is Wahala's well, experienced some disappointment because every time we got our hopes up that we were going to be this or move forward, then for whatever reason, it, the, our, it was, the rug was pulled out from us. That's a very astute observation. And it makes me really proud of you all for joining Main Street at this moment in time for that very reason. Because of the proven track record, if you, if you work Main Street and we work together and we work all these points at the same time, your progress may not be instantaneous, but I promise you it's going to happen. You know, never forget, I love what Nancy Whitworth and uh, Director of Economic Development in Greenville says, never forget Greenville's 35-year-old overnight success story. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you didn't get in whatever state you consider yourself to be in overnight, you won't get out of that state overnight. You have to be committed to the long run. That's a really, really astute statement. Good luck following that one. <laughs> Say that again, please. Thrifty but not flashy. Okay, good. He's proud. He's proud. Mm -hmm. Oh. He's old. <laughs> He's reserved. Doesn't he like the great outdoors? <laughs> I, I'm observing to you on a platter. 
I mean, I, I would, I would think you would. What else? She loves it. She loves it. <laughs> She's trying to bring him into the 21st century. <laughs> good. All right, good. Any other personality traits we need to be aware of of Mr. and Miss Wahala? Oh, man, that's another important step. She's forgotten what she has and what she can become. I've always made it my ambition in my work is just to turn a mirror on you all and your assets. Because when I show up, all I see is this incredible, lush environment next to the mountains with the presence of the arts, a strong presence of history, this, this sense of culture. I mean, for a town of your size to have those kinds of assets, you are the envy of so many people. But I think sometimes you forget because you live every day. You're down in the rough. Down in the rough. One, one story and then I, I'm coming back to you. I, I drive a pretty decent used Lexus. That's not a proud statement. It's just, it's just a statement, okay? Don't, don't read into it. Other than I know every single thing that's wrong in my car. You know how I know every single thing that's wrong in my car? I drive it every single day. And so guess what I need to do every now and then? I need to get a passenger in my car. And they go, man, it's a nice car. I think, you know what? It really is. And, and sometimes you need some outsiders to come to Wahala and remind you, this is a fabulous place. Because I know you know everything is wrong. I heard a lot <laughs> of other things that are wrong. But, but at the end of the day, this is a great place, and you're going to fight for it, right? Yes, sir, you were patiently on the I don't qualify by old, but young at heart. Oh, good. That, that's me. Yeah, old but young at heart. Good. Anybody else? Time for one or two more before we close it down. Yes? People that live in Wahala are misunderstood by the people that come to Wahala because they don't have an interaction with us. Uh -huh. For somebody that was encountered working with people that came into our town yeah. on vacation, we yeah. have a lot of vacations to come yeah. to Wahala. A lot of our community doesn't even realize it. Yeah. So we kind of need to angle our position for Wahala, or he or she needs to realize, like, when we're putting on our makeup or when we're putting on our wall cap, <laughs> we need to understand yeah. we have people coming to our town that everybody talks about, oh, we want these people to come. They're already coming. Yeah. So we need to embrace, embrace those people <laughs> and let our community know, like, hey, these people are here and they're here to stay. And we, we, we well said. You know, Economic Development 101, the best dollar that can be spent in Wahala is the dollar that doesn't originate from here. My dollar and Jenny's dollar is better than your dollar because it's not that dollar. So those guests, that's why I don't call them tourists, by the way. So those guests, you know, let's welcome them and, and let's, let's understand that they can. Because here's the other beautiful thing. One of my favorite things about a tourism-based economic development engine is all the things you do for them the trail systems, you get to enjoy it. The trail systems and the playgrounds and all those things that you do to lure them to enjoy your place, you get to enjoy. It's, it's a win-win. It's Time for one or two more, and then we're gonna shut it down. All right, you guys have been an amazing audience tonight. Let me tell you what happens next, and we're gonna shut it down. Next slide, actually, go two slides, please, David, one more. So tomorrow night at six o'clock right here, Jenny and I will be making our final recommendations. These are going to kind of be high-level recommendations against those four legs of the stool and four points of Main Street. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you, that this is not an open invitation, but on Wednesday morning, we're going to be working with some people to formulate those recommendations into an action plan. But tomorrow night, if you want to kind of come and listen and hear um, kind of our big ideas based on what you told us and what we observed, we welcome you back to this very venue tomorrow at 6. Um, but in the meantime, on behalf of Jenny and Main Street, South Carolina, and, and Libby, I want to thank you so much for giving up uh, Monday night to be with us, and I hope you have a great evening and a great week.
Thank you. 